Hello, people out there. Today, I'm back out in my search for monster moccasins. Today, I'm in Abita Springs, Louisiana, at the Abita Flatwoods Preserve. We are in a time of drought right now in this part of Louisiana, so a lot of the swamps I typically go to have dried up. And normally, this means that I don't find any snakes. But today, I found something that was so astounding that I've never experienced before and have only ever heard stories of. I think I might see some more water over here. Like this is just normally just all flowing water. And it is just absolutely dried up. We are in a time of drought. A very small very tiny pool. And we have got some life in it, even. We have got some life in here. What we have here? What do we have in here? Catfish. We have catfish in here. What's this? It's another catfish too? Look at that! That's a pickerel. I haven't seen one of those in a super long time. We have a pickerel in here. Poor pickerel. Pickerel. Just another catfish here. Gotta be careful with these catfish. These are, seem to be bullhead, bullhead catfish. Let me see what you are. I think this might be a pygmy sunfish. Yeah, that's a pygmy sunfish. Pygmy sunfish. Uh, that looks like a war mouth. Got some more pickerels in here. Looks like all these bigger catfish are dead. Are these bullheads or are they something else? Uh, water is so muddy. They've lost their clay. I believe they are bullheads. Probably a yellow bullhead catfish. Uh, uh, that looks like another war mouth. Let's see if I can. Grab one of these catfish without getting uh, spined. There's one of them right there. But this is what happens in the dry season. I'm surprised that we have pickerel in here. I did not think we had pickerel out here. This one looks like he's still alive. <clears throat> These are all yellow bullhead catfish, it looks like. But this could be a snake attractant. Cottonmouths will seek stuff out like this. And this is just be an absolute buffet for one. They didn't even eat the dead fish right there. They would smell out these dead fish. And it's just easy pickings for them. So if I'm lucky, perhaps there might be one stage up somewhere over here. Oh my goodness, look at this. As I say that, there's a big snake. It could be a cottonmouth right up in here. It looks like one. Yep, it is a cottonmouth. See if I can pull it out. There he is. There he is. That's not a giant cottonmouth. 
but that is a cotton mouth as I say that. <laughs> there we go. We've got ourselves a cotton mouth. Just as I'm saying, there's probably one staged up around here somewhere. He's probably fattened up, fattened himself up on the fish that's been surviving in that pool. Won't be surviving for much longer unless we get some rain soon. Those catfish, they can survive for a very long time uh, in very, very low oxygenated water. All those other fish have already died. The pickerel, the warmouth. But we had a cottonmouth sitting right up in, up under these, up under these roots. And he's not too bad of temperament. He ain't too bad. He's probably a bit sluggish because he's probably full on fish. Probably full on fish. What's up there, buddy? Oh. <laughs> he's a bit of a stud. He is a bit of a stud. This is my first actual cottonmouth from this area that I've caught. I like I said, I released one out here some years ago, probably double the size of this one. And he looked a lot bigger than it, that I thought he was when he was up in there. He looked a lot bigger. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna snag some pictures of this guy and I'm gonna let him back go up underneath his root system. I think I do see some water down there. Oh, there's even less water than there was last time. There's a raccoon. There's a, there's a raccoon down there. Is that a snake down there? I see something in the water. I see something in the water there. That might be a snake. Yeah, I do think it is a snake. Could be a cotton mouth by the looks of it. Yeah, it is a cotton mouth. And there's still fish in these pools. If the pretty decent sized cotton mouth just kind of sitting you can see all the fish all the fish that are trapped in here there's another snake there it's probably an it's an, another cotton mouth we got two cotton mouths here probably here gorging themselves on these fish see how close we can get to these cotton mouths it's this one i'm interested in this one's a pretty good size one that one over there is not too big it's filled with catfish. It's not like they've got too much area to go. I'll come around the side of him. He's definitely going to try to bolt. I'll come around from the, from the side. I wonder if I get up on this log, could I get him with the tongs? Okay. Oh, hello. He's awake. He is awake. Let's see if I can just grab you here, buddy. <laughs> That's a strike. All right, there we go. That's a pretty decent sized cotton mouth, but that's not a giant that we're looking for. But that's one of the biggest ones we've seen out here so far. One of the biggest ones we've came across so far. He is a very thick one. I wonder if we can get this other one. He's starting to swim off. I wonder if we can get his uh, buddy over here as, as well, if I can get him to chill out. <laughs> I see his buddy swimming off over there. But that is a good sized cotton. Maybe we can bring him to uh, his buddy.
would like to get both of them. There's a third one. There's a third one right here. Oh my goodness, it's a big one too. There's a third one here and it's a, bit, it's a big one. There's a third one right here. Oh my goodness, that's a big one. That is a big one, look at that. That is a big one. Oh, look at that right there. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Okay. Oh, buddy. Uh, <laughs> do not do what I just did right there. I did not want this snake getting away into the water. Uh, that is a thick boy right there. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I got venomous snakes coming at me here. Fortunately, I'm wearing boots and they're not chasing me. This is them just wanting to go to the water. See, if you look, they just want to go right past me, right back to the water where they feel safe. Golly, we got two really good sized cotton outs here. <laughs> Have a go at these two beefy boys here. <laughs> All right. This place is crawling with venomous snakes. I've never seen, I've double caught cotton knots before, but I've never seen three in one spot. Let's get them to chill out. All right, <laughs> have a go at those two thick boys there. And that other one, still over there. I'm just wondering, there's a fish. That raccoon must have taken that fish out the water and I spooked him off. There's a fish on the bank over there, flopping. And these snakes are here because of these shrinking pools. This is usually a very large water source. And you can see all the catfish in here that are stuck in this drying up pool. These catfish can survive in very low oxygenated waters. That's why they're able to live in here. And if we continue not having rain for the next couple days, for the next few days, these catfish will all die. This water will be gone, but these, these snakes know that these fish are trapped here and they come here and they gorge themselves on these fish. A kisseron piscivorus, that's the scientific name for the cottonmouth. Piscivorus means fish eater. But a bit of a misleading name as cottonmouths are voracious eaters. They will feed on anything from fish, frogs, other snakes. If a big enough one finds a baby alligator, I've heard of them eating baby alligators too. Rodents. Man, just have a go at these two big ones. And this one here is, is the biggest one that we've caught so far. The biggest one we have found so far. But I'm looking for one that's even bigger than this one. Even bigger than this one. Let's see if I can get them stretched out a bit. I'd released one out here. Even bigger than this one a few years ago. <laughs> and he is all over the place. Woo! <laughs> he is all over. He is wiry. He is wiry. <laughs> this snake is keeping me on my toes. Right by my foot there. Ooh. Right by my foot there. Whew. <laughs> Whew. All right, I want to get you stretched out to see how long you are. You look like a good three foot. A good three foot. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Ooh, look at that snake. That is a good size cotton mouth right there. That is a good size cotton mouth. And make no mistake, I make a mistake with this snake and I'm going to know about it. I am going to know about it. It's these bigger snakes that you gotta worry about. Not those, it's a common myth that the baby venomous snakes 
are more venomous or more dangerous than the adults because they don't know how to regulate their own venom. They absolutely do know how to regulate their own venom. These big ones have so much more venom. They have up to four to five times the amount, the volume of that venom. And the more you anger them, the more they're gonna, the more of that venom they're gonna want, they're gonna wind up injecting. So it's very imperative I do not get bitten by one of these bigger snakes. But the more I interact with them, eventually they will calm down a little bit. Calm down a little bit. And for those of you that are probably thinking that he's just tra he's chasing me, you can see he just wants to go in between me because I'm standing in between where he wants to go. He wants to go to the water. All right, there we go. He got him stretched out. That is a good size cottonmouth right there. That is a tank. But they get a whole lot bigger than they get up to three times bigger than this. The record cottonmouth is about six foot long. I'm looking for one just a little bit bigger than this. But that, that is a good size snake. A good size snake. These western cottonmouths, they are the widest ranging species of the three cottonmouths we get in the U.S. They range from uh, from Texas, Oklahoma, to uh, Mississippi, following the Mississippi River all the way up to southern Illinois. And they love, you see, it's a bit calm down. Now, after I've interacted with them a little bit, uh, these snakes love to hang up in these swamps, in these swampy areas. Swamps, creeks, but the, when they as they, as they get bigger, these larger ones will tend to grow, tend to stray a little farther away from the water, stray a little farther away from the water, and live a life kind of like that of a rattlesnake, kind of like that of a rattlesnake, where they're they're, they're not hanging around the water as much, they're not feeding on uh, fish or frogs as much, they're gonna be feeding more on rodents once they get to a certain size. And these are pit vipers. If you look right close, can't get them too close to my face. If you look right on the tip of his nostril, right on the tip of his nostril is where that heat seeking pit is. Pit vipers are very accurate with their striking because of those heat seeking pits. That other cottonmouth is still sitting over there, just chilling. I want to go over there and get them. Heat seeking pits allow these pit vipers to make very accurate strikes. If you're within range of these snakes and they want to make a strike, most of the time you are not going to avoid that strike. If a pit viper, pit viper misses a strike, most of the time that's because you are out of range of their strike range. Right now I am out of range, but this snake is proving to be a wiry snake. He could come to, come, uh, come at me all of a sudden, but I think I have uh, worked him out pretty good. I don't think he's going to do that. Now the venom that these snakes possess is mainly a hematoxin. The hematoxin venom, hematoxic venom is blood destroying venom. Blood destroying venom, the, hematoxic, the, the hematoxins in their venom is going to be destroying your red blood cells, uh, causing it, um, stopping it from coagulating. It's gonna basically turn your blood into jello, turns your blood into jello. And I know full and well the effect of that. I've been bit. I was bitten by these snake. One by one of these snakes. Not one of this size, mind you. But I was bitten by one of these snakes back in back in 2018. After seven years of catching and handling them, I finally took took a bad bite from one of these snakes. Put me in the hospital for four days. Four hundred thousand dollar hospital bill. But yes, yeah, it's, it's primarily a hematoxin that stops your blood from clotting turns it into jello, causes massive amounts of pain and swelling. I swole up all the way up to my shoulder here when I, was, when I was bitten. But there are some cases of cytotoxicity. Cytotoxicity means that's tissue destroying venom. Not all cases have resulted in cyto cytotoxicity, tissue destruction. And I believe it varies between locales as I'm pretty sure all three species of cottonmouths have been shown to uh, have cytotoxic bites, but so I'm pretty sure it all has to do with locale, with where the snakes are 
uh, the same t the, s the same kind of snake could have a different venom than a snake a few parishes, a few counties over. But I'm gonna get some pictures pictures of these guys, and I think we can go ahead and call it a day. All right, so I brought the snake up from the pool of water up to the boardwalk here. And I had noticed down there, because I noticed down there, this snake has something sticking out of its side here. So I brought it up here to get a closer look at it. I headed the snake to be able to get a closer look at it. And that is actually a catfish spine sticking out of its side right there. That's a catfish spine. And that's probably going to kill this snake because it can't move through its body that well with that spine sticking out of its body. This catfish won't be able to move down, move down into its stomach. So I'm going to try to help this snake out. I might have something I can cut that spine off with in my truck. So, all right, so I managed to bring the big boy to my truck and cut the spine off with some scissors. So I think he'll be okay now. So I'm going to leave him to it here. And I'm going to see if I can look at his smaller friend over here. I don't know where that other one went, but uh, put that other one back. He swam right over to this little one here. So I'm going to see if I can uh, work my way over to him. If I can. I'm not stressing over that little one. But I would love to see, since there's three just sitting right here, if there's any more big ones hanging around like that. Look, here's the tracks. Snake track right here. Frogs everywhere. Hey, buddy. <laughs> He's over there. I see, I see one of his coils. I would also like to... There's another cottonmouth there, a little one. There are some venomous snakes everywhere. We got a little cottonmouth. Look, he's sniffing that dead fish right there. I'm not going to mess with this. He's sniffing that dead fish. He's thinking about eating it. Hadn't even seen me. Look, look at him trying to eat it. Prime example. Here's a prime example of how cottonmouths are carrion eaters. I, I forgot to mention that earlier, but cottonmouths will also eat animals that are already dead. Now that fish is probably uh, way too big for that little cotton mouth. There's another one. There's another one right behind him. Look at that. There are cotton mouths everywhere here. Yeah, he's, re he's realized that that fish is too big for him and he's left it alone, but he definitely was trying to eat it. There's a bigger one right there. I don't know if it's the same one I just caught earlier. It's a frog I just kicked. I wonder what kind of fish this is right here. Let's see if I can grab him. No. There are cottonmouths everywhere. I've never been in such a cottonmouth infested area. This place is concentrated, concentrated. See how much closer I can get. And there's another fish here. Well, that's the same fish that I saw. Oh, that's a good size one. That's a good size one. There's a dead long ear sunfish right here. You know what? This might be big enough for this cottonmouth to eat. He's looking for food. Look at this big one swimming right past me. This big one just swimming right past me. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> he hissed at me. <laughs> but I want to see if I can feed this little one here. I want to see if I can feed this little one. He's sniffing around, looking, looking for a meal. That longest sunfish is already kind of dying, being in a low oxygenated while the snake went, wound up in, going ran into this hole here. So probably got spooked by me, but he's probably gonna come back out when I leave, sniff out this little dead fish here, and eat him. This place is. Infested, infested with cotton mouths. See if I can come back and take a look at this big boy over here. 
This place is infested. Oh, this is a good looking one too. This, this is not the same one. This one's got more, it's got more pattern on him than that first one that I saw. Hey. <laughs> oh man, you are a good looking snake too. Hello, hello. No, 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 no. Come here, come here. <laughs> You are a bright colored individual. I definitely want to get some pictures of you. Definitely want to get some pictures of you. Look at this fish here. What is this? That's a pickerel. That's a pickerel. Look at that. Ah, that's a little pickerel. <laughs> never seen one of these alive. I never seen one this big. That's a pickerel. <laughs> Isn't that insane? This snake then buried himself in the mud right here. You're getting yourself all dirty for your photo shoot. Just try and wash you off in this water here. Hello. Hello. There we go. He's a bit cleaner now. We're gonna take him, maybe over there. You no, know, I'm happy to be handled. Don't go back to the mud, please. Just cleaned you off. Just cleaned you off, don't go back to the mud. Over here is a little bit more controlled. This is very floppy. It's a very floppy snake. Very floppy, like, like a freaking crate, like a fat crate. There, there we go. All right, buddy, I just wanted to get some pictures of because you are a good looking cottonmouth. They're the best looking one I found here so far. Everybody else here is all dark. So, bring it back over here. Man, these are all good size. I've never seen so many decent sized cottonmouths in such a concentrated area. And that big one is still just chilling over there. He is still just chilling on the bank. I guess recovering from his surgery. Oh look, there's the little one that I missed earlier. I want to see if there's an even bigger one hanging around here. If there's an even bigger one. Whew. It's absolutely crawling with venomous snakes. You have seriously got to watch your step. Grip my tongs over here. Uh. See if we got anybody else hanging out. Cause this just seems like they're just crawling out the woodwork. It just seems like they're just crawling out the woodwork. And that's the thing, when you get these times of drought, when you get these times of drought, sometimes you can find these little oases. 
this seems to be the only standing body of water in this whole area. So that makes animals that much more concentrated around here. There's frogs, there's snakes. All right, so I was thinking about leaving here. I was walking around and uh, finds bits of snake skin here, find the bits of snake shed and um, see uh, more of it right here. And then I look under here, look under there. We have a cottonmouth under there. <laughs> look at buddy under there. He's not a bad size, but I'm not, I'm not gonna leave, I'm gonna leave him be. He doesn't look super big, but uh, yeah, trace the snake skin back to the snake. Hey buddy, just chill under there. <laughs> this makes cotton mouth number six that I have found here at this little dried up pool. Alright, we're gonna leave him to it. <laughs> Man, I am in heaven right now. This would be a lot of people's worst nightmare, but I am in heaven. That might actually be a close to a record for me. I think my record is somewhere around like six or five cottonmouths in one outing. I think the big one finally went back into the water or somewhere. He's not hanging on the bank anymore. What kind of fish is this? Is that a bluegill? That looks like a bluegill right there. A bluegill. There's all kinds of fish up in this little dried up pool. But, uh... Yeah, we are gonna call it a day at this. We're gonna call it a day.